Brockton. I'm your host, Susanna Sudborough from the Brockton Enterprise, and we're pleased to have in studio today um, Tom Minicello, candidate for Ward 1 um, for the City Council. So, Tom, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you think you would be a good candidate for the City Council. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you taking the time. Um, well, um, my name is Tom Minicello. Uh, I've been in the city my whole life. I, uh, I grew up here as a, you know, as a child, went to the Ashfield Elementary School. I um, went to East Middle School. Now it was East, well, it was East Junior High back then. Uh, Brockton High School, class of 83. Getting a little older these days. A little, <laughs> little friend told me yesterday, hey, a lot of gray hair there, Tom. So I said, well, I have my hair, though. <laughs> so um, uh, raised my family here. I have a business here. I've been um, on the school committee for a num number of years. Um, I was uh, mm -hmm. privileged to serve as the vice chair for 10 years, which um, is, is a real statement from my fellow school committee people because they have to vote for you. To, mm. And to be on there for vice chair for 10 years is pretty rare. <laughs> and, uh, but it, it was a really uh, a great privilege and a great opportunity. Um, my children went to school here in Brockton. Uh, I raised my family here and um, they were very successful. And um, they enjoyed the Brockton Public Schools. My wife, Patty, and I um, had confidence in the Brockton Public Schools and loved our, loved our city. She grew up here, high school sweetheart, met her at the high school. Um, and um, Brockton is just basically a part of us. Mm. And um, it's just a great place to be. Um, it's a city of immigrants. The only thing that changes here is where people are from at any given time, you know, from around the world. And that's what makes it interesting and inviting to a lot of people. You know, it's a gateway city. And we're, I think, a very welcoming community, which is, which is the way to be. Um, mm -hmm. So why do I think I'm prepared or what I'd like to be city councilor? Well, um, again, my children have moved on. I wanted to have a, a, a stake in, in their education. And I think now it's time for someone else to take their turn who has a child. You know, I think children mm. in the system, you have a very mo a, a strong motivation for mm -hmm. school committee. So now my strong motivation is, is, is moving me to, towards wanting to uh, broaden the issues that we deal with. I mean, you're dealing with education, but you're also dealing with public safety. You know, you're dealing with the image of our community. You're dealing with the safety of our community. You're dealing with um, um, socioeconomics. You're dealing with all sorts of issues, important issues to people. Um, mm -hmm. And I want to really focus on making Brockton move forward in terms of building on the foundation that we have. And mm. in this point in time, Brockton is really enjoying a huge um, renaissance when it comes to prices with regard to real estate. People recognize the location and proximity to Boston, Cape Cod, um, Rhode Island, New York. I mean, we, we're, right on the, we're right on the highway and we can get anywhere quickly. And the prices here in Brockton are huge. They've never been higher. Um, and now is the time to really jump on that bandwagon and take that momentum and bring us to a place where you know, we're going so it's like a Quincy, you know, where there's a, a lot of development. There's a lot of economic um, activity going on. And you can see it here in the downtown. Um, you know, there's a lot of good things going on. But there's some, some things that need attention to. Um, and some of that's public safety. When certain, certain spots in the city, you'll, you'll, you'll drive under a bridge, you'll drive down a street. And, you know, there's some inappropriate things. You know, there's, you know, there's people, you know, camping out under the bridges in some of the bridges. There's, People, you know, doing unsanitary things under the bridges. You know, we need to have, we have resources and these people need places to go. Um, but out in the, in the open where, you know, uh, you want to attract, you know, families, you want to attract business people. You know, we have to have, we have to have balance and we have to have, um, we have to have order in terms of making sure that our people feel safe. Our people feel that this is a place that business can be conducted and, um, yeah, this is part of the reason why I want to be a city councilor. Absolutely. And really quickly, um, you mentioned you're a local business owner. What um, business do you own? Um, I have an attorney's office, a law office of Sorgi and Minicello. We focus on real estate related uh, matters, wills, trust and estates, uh, business type of law. You know, so we're pretty busy. And, the, and the, so we're, we're on the cutting edge with all of this real estate um, boom that's going on, Yeah. which is great. So is that what you think is... Um, these issues that you've talked about, public safety, real estate, mm -hmm. do you feel these are the biggest issues facing Brockton right now, or are well, there I other think, ones? I think, well, I think there's a lot of other issues. Um, people, people want uh, fairness in Brockton. Uh, there have been some issues in the past with regard to 
um, nepotism. Um, mm. People want to know that you know when they put uh, they put in for a job in Brockton that you know, they're going to be qualified and they're going to be given a fair look. It's not going to be uh, you know who you know what you, you know and, and and how you got the job is based on your connection. You know, people want fairness, um, and that's what everyone wants in Brockton. Um, um, I think that here in the city, we, um, we're very focused on our, our children. So we need to make sure that they have safe places to go and, and spend time. The parks need to be, in my opinion, uh, I think overhaul, making sure that, you know, with, with, um, with the changes in, in, in the drug laws, uh, you know, with the people accepting, you know, marijuana as part of a, a um, a norm, so to speak, uh, you know, like like alcohol. You know, people make the argument, well, you can go to the liquor store and get you know beer or wine or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think we we see more um, more issues on the streets with regard to our children and safety. You know, people drive. You see a lot more incidents of people driving under the influence of this, that, or the other thing. And we need to make sure that the kids are safe. Um, we need to make sure that the schools are safe. The the, the kids in our schools, people, uh, parents have said that. There's a lot of marijuana activity in the schools, and, and it's, causing, it's causing upheaval. Hmm. Well, that's partly because our society is saying, well, you know, it's sending a signal that that's all right. Hmm. And, and, and so long as you know, people are responsible about things, well, that's fine. But understand that we need to focus on our children and make sure they're not, it's not appropriate for them at the young age. They have to, you know, they have to mature, and they need to focus on what they need to to be successful. Mm -hmm. And we need to make sure that our you know, students and our education that they um, provide, uh, get from the Brockton Public Schools is top notch. So that's a piece, that's a one piece. You know, education is a huge piece because it's the building block for successful people that we want to return to Brockton. And, and, and so our city will thrive. Mm -hmm. so, so it's all connected, it's all, it's all interconnected. Oh, you know, it's, it's, not, it's, not one, it's not one issue, it's, it's a whole bunch of different things that um, get, get connected and make a vibrant city. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what kind of things would you enact or try to enact as a city councilor, if elected, that would help these issues? Well, I think that one thing we need to do is work closely with our um, public safety officials. Mm -hmm. um, um, up in Ward 1, the big issue in Ward 1 right now is the nursing home that on, on Pearl Street that... Um, is, is looking to be a mental health center, and we need to make sure that our public safety officials, our police department, our elected officials, the uh, people that want to operate the, the facility, do it in a responsible manner because the neighbors are concerned with, um, they call them like walkaways, people that um, you know, go to the facility and then just for some reason decide they're not going to stay, they're not going to have their appointment, and you know, people want to make sure that the people aren't going to just stroll down the street and walk into the Hancock School or walk, you know, uh, go into the neighborhoods. And, and because usually if, they're, if, people, if people leave a facility like that, they're usually having a bad day you know, because they're there for their appointment. And if they're not going to go for their appointment, something's, something's not right. Maybe they're, you know, they're just in a bad mood or their medication's not right. So their mental health at the time you know, needs um, some TLC. And people, you can't just... You just have to make sure that the, the citizens and the neighborhoods are, are going to be safe. And it's a resource that would be good to have for people with mental health issues. But we need to ensure that the, the public safety component is, is really above board and, and adequate to, to deal with these types of concerns, which are legitimate. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a balance. <laughs> we want to have these facilities. We want to help people. But the, the community deserves to know that we're safe. We're, you know, we're, they're doing it responsibly, and, and we're comfortable because they've assured us, and they're willing, willing to work with us. The good thing is that the facility is willing to work with the community, mm -hmm. and that's all about outreach, and that's what an elected official needs to do, be willing to talk to people about issues. You know. For sure. So um, as a ward counselor, you're required to represent um, your ward, but also looked out for the needs of the city. So how would you balance um, voting in terms of um, balancing voting for your ward versus balancing, sorry, voting for your ward versus voting for the city as a whole? Excellent question. It happens all the time on the school committee. Mm -hmm. I represent Ward 1, the students of Ward 1. But 
let's, let's, let's not be naive. The votes are, affect the entire school district, you know. Um, so very few votes on the city council just affect Ward 1. They're, they're much broader than just Ward 1. Um, I've, done, I've done a good job to represent Ward 1 with regard to the, the schools as a, city, uh, as a school committee person. And the same, and the same um, facts and, and issues and, and will, will rise you know, on, the school, on the city council. It's, it's, it's big picture items like um, you know, one of the, the issues that the, the city was grappling with was you know, the, the water issue in Brockton. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether to buy the desalinization plant or not. That's not just a Ward 1 issue. That's the whole mm. city. I mean, you're not going to just like, oh, well, well, Ward 1, it's good for Ward 1. No, 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 no. It's the city. Come on. You know? mm -hmm. so, it's, it's, so it's the same thing. Public safety. It's not, um, it's not oh, 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 the police are only going to ride around Ward 1. Mm. Let's not be crazy. The police ride around the whole city. The firemen ride around the whole city. Public Health Works Department, they're going to serve the parks in Ward 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. You know, so... Yes, I make sure that I'm, I'm going to be the eyes and ears for Ward 1, be certainly interested in all the Ward 1 issues, just like the Pearl Street issue right now with mm -hmm. regard to you know, the nursing home. But it, it's a broader, much bigger picture. You, know, you affect the entire city. So a Ward 1 counselor is really like a counselor at large in, in, in essence. I mean, you, know, you, you, you work with the counselors at large. You, you, you work with the big issues that affect the entire city because... What's going on downtown affects Ward 1, affects Ward 2, affects Ward 3, every, you know, all the way through Ward 7. So, mm -hmm. so it, it, it's, a, it's a good place to be because we'd pretty be, be boring just <laughs> looking at Ward 1. You know, here we go, yeah, from here to here, and that's it now. Mm -hmm. you know, Brockton is a big place, and that's what makes it a great place. You know? mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, so I, I have no problem <laughs> with representing Ward 1 and certainly know the interactions and how things work with the city. Plus, I know the budgets in terms of that's one advantage I have. I know the school budgets and certainly how the city budgets, the whole city budgets intertwine with each other. So it's a good place to be. Great. Um, getting into some more specific issues. Um, three years ago, the city entered into a trash agreement that resulted in a smaller trash container. Uh, the decision resulted in homeowners having to purchase the city trash bags specifically um, for overflow. These bags have seen a 25% increase in costs after two years of service. Um, normal consumer trash bags can be purchased for several times less. Mm -hmm. uh, what can we do about this issue? Well, I can tell you this. When that, when that small barrel arrived at my home, I was like, what is this? You know, because you go, I, 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 I said to Patty, my wife, I said, wait a minute, is this big barrel, the one for the, for the recycles, or, or is this the trash? Because this little thing, I don't know how, you know, we, there were four of us in the house, you know, two boys and, and, and Patty and myself. I'm like, what the heck? You know, so I, 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 I can't say I'm a big fan of the small barrel. So, so I, whatever, whatever I can do to get, you know, like when you drive by the other towns, the barrels are pretty much the same size, one for recycle and one for, uh, tr you know, everyday trash. So um, that's something that I'm in favor of, you know, getting that larger barrel. So I will do everything in my power to look for resources and find money because that, that's one of the things I actually am pretty good at because on the school system, um, as you probably know, for many years, we've had a budget deficit, and we had to learn to do more with less, mm. unfortunately. And then we fought, and we fought, and we fought with our city councilors, with our local and state officials uh, up in Boston, and my fellow school committee people, and the community, the citizens of Brockton. Um, and, we, and we got some, some really good money with the, uh, the changes in the education funding. So, so I'm, I'm going to find some money in order to figure out how we're getting the larger barrel for the day-to-day -day <laughs> trash. Because for a normal family, it's just not enough. Even if you are very, very um, steadfast in recycling and, and really you know, diligent about it, it still is tough for a family to fit it all in that one barrel. Yeah. But, uh, but for, huge, for huge families, I mean, lots of people, yeah, unfortunately, you know, hopefully we can minimize the number of bags you have to buy. But but maybe get you a bigger barrel like every other community when you, know, when you drive through it, so. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Great, well, thank you so much, Tom. That's all the time we have today. Um, but thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on what you would do as a city councilor. Um, and to everyone watching, don't forget to vote in the citywide general election on November 2nd. I respectfully ask for your vote. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.